Well, first of all, thank you guys for fitting me in. I really appreciate it. And the movie is very fresh in my mind because I just uh, had a chance to see it this week again. So there, you know, I, I guess the obvious question is, how did Alex, how did you cross paths with, with the Cormans for the first time? Well, it all started, uh, I had the idea to do the documentary, but I had no connection to the Cormans. Mm -hmm. um, I was just a freelance journalist in, in Brooklyn at the time. Uh, so I, I cold called Roger's office, um, asked to have an interview with him for an arts magazine. Uh, I flew out, he said yes. I flew out to LA, we did the interview, um, and right after the interview I asked him, you know, what do you think about me doing a documentary about your life? And he said yes, um, so, uh, which I was actually like, still explaining, oh, yeah, like, yeah. but I, you know, you should take a chance with me, and he said, no, 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 yes, uh, before you go back to New York, come to the office, we'll talk about it in further detail. Um, and that's how it got started. Now, what was your experience with filmmaking prior to this? Had you done a lot of stuff that you could show him and say, this is why you should believe in me, or? I hadn't directed a yeah. documentary at that point, but I had produced, um, uh, I had produced for a theater director named Robert Wilson, and, and I knew that Roger was a fan of the arts, and so I thought that would impress him. Um, I had produced a feature-length uh, documentary for MTV Networks, uh, so I had things to show, mm -hmm. credits, um, but uh, this was my first effort as a director. So, to the Cormans, I have to ask you, I, I, first of all, have you, have, has somebody, I, I would imagine that a lot of people have probably wanted to document your story before, is that not the case? Is this the, the first time? Uh, there was a documentary made about 25, maybe even 30 years ago, mm -hmm. by Christian Blackwell, mm -hmm. uh, that I thought was a good documentary, covering the first part of the career, mm -hmm. and Alex has covered not only the first part, but essentially, primarily, the second part. And the personal side of your life as well, which maybe was not as covered in that earlier one. I don't I haven't seen it so I don't know, but it's great to see that side of your life which I wasn't fully uh, aware of before. Was was that something that you were always uh, open to to doing Mrs. Corman? To featuring? Uh, well, I'm a little shy of yeah. the, uh, publicity actually, mm -hmm. which is uh, you know, maybe not such a good thing. Uh, and Alex kind of came into our lives mm -hmm. and sort of quietly, uh, unobtrusively, and with a smile, um, uh, you know, began to delve more and more into various aspects of, of you know, Roger's career primarily, mm -hmm. and then touched on, on others in the family and, mm -hmm. and the larger Corman World family. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I was, <clears throat> we were actually in China, I think it was, when uh, someone from the office forwarded the what you had written about <laughs> saying that it was you know, a good Oscar contender. Oh, sure, yeah. So that was kind of <laughs> exciting to read about when you're far away. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I guess coming back to Alex, it's such a, such a big topic to bite off. This is how many decades have, have uh, both of the, the Corman's been doing uh, fascinating things. How did you figure out how to excuse me, approach it, just was it always going to be sort of a, an all-encompassing thing, or did you think about maybe just focusing on the filmmaking or the, or the personal life, or how, how did you arrive at what you ended up doing? I always wanted it to be broad in scope, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to look at his entire like, career, mm -hmm. um, so that was always the plan. Um, I had no idea what I, I didn't know back then how crazy <laughs> that, that was, to, what a crazy task it was mm -hmm. going to be. Um, it took me two straight years, basically just to, it was a full-time job, just watching every movie, watching all the DVD extras, listening, reading every book I could get my hands on, uh, not only books that were written about the Cormans, mm -hmm. but also uh, books on Scorsese, mm -hmm. where I could just find these stories and kind of, you know, connect the dots between this whole Corman extended family of filmmakers that have gone through these doors. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to be prepared in interviews to, you know, so that I knew what I was sure. talking about. Um, and then when we got started and the footage started to come in, it was a big challenge in the edit. Like, I mean, a DVD of this It's <laughs> got a lot of extras. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first rough cut was six hours. Wow. Um, and how much footage do you know overall did you accumulate? Thousands. thousands. Yeah, wow. It was, it was like, it was just, it was crazy. Um, 
But it was really cool. It was like kind of not only looking at one man's career, but looking at like kind of the history of cinema, mm-hmm. you know, over the past uh, three to four decades, um, which was really incredible. And everyone who worked on the film, it was just like, I don't think that we ever were upset about it because we were just constantly learning, yeah. you know, so much stuff as film fans. Well, to give people who haven't yet had a chance to see it a bit of a teaser, I just wonder if we can uh, ask the Cormans to recount, how did you two first cross paths and uh, not only personally hit it off, but also professionally? You, you're very uh, involved with each other's work. So if you could, I, I guess I'll start with you, Mr. Corman. Well, I'll defer to Mark. Okay, <laughs> okay, Mrs. Corman. <laughs> I came on a job interview. Julie turned down the job with me, but agreed to go out to dinner with me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, once you made it official, what was the evolution of the, you know, you talk about it in the film, about how, um, Mrs. Corman, you started to take on responsibilities, and you didn't necessarily at first realize he was going to give you so, you know, sort of, just let you run free on your own. He wouldn't be there some days on the okay. on the set. Maybe you can talk about that. Oh well, <clears throat> because uh, Roger has a way of uh, like just kind of thinking people can do things, mm-hmm. and then they do them. Yeah. So, so he just started uh, um, by saying, "Could you watch the money on this movie?" Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, "Sure." Mm-hmm. And then he said, "Well, now we need a director," and I said. Oh, well, I'll call Marty Scorsese. I'm sure he'll be able to recommend someone. And then he said, well, now we... You know, and it was like... It was kind of like that. Right. And then he was making 12 movies or something, you know, and distributing and what, everything. So um, so I ended up producing it. And I said I'd never do that again. It was just, <laughs> it was just too exhausting and enervating to yeah. you know, think. At the end of every day, I would think, I don't believe we did it. I don't believe... It was nine pictures before I got to the end of the day and assumed that I would finish the mm-hmm. picture. So Now when you two come home at the end of the day from, from making a film, is it do you flip a switch and it's it's on to other things or do you take work home as well in a way? Well we used to come home and talk about you know, what we were doing yeah. over cocktails and then we realized it was just talking about problems. And yeah. So mostly now we, we don't we don't so much talk about it. Right There's now. a little bit of talk about film, you know, and then yep. we move away. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, back to Alex, just the question that I think the answer in some ways seems obvious, but I'm curious just what your answer is. What is it that specifically interested you in this story? Which, uh, you know, we see the finished product, it makes sense, but for somebody who's saying, why spend how many years of your life? You said, like, Five. Five years. That's a big <laughs> commitment. So what specifically uh, appealed to you? At first, uh, the adventure started um, because I was a big fan of, mm-hmm. of Roger's movies. Um, and uh, I grew up with a personal obsession with Pam Greer. Um, <laughs> that was kind of like pro- probably my first Corman mm-hmm. films were Pam Greer movies. Um, and then uh, I read his autobiography when I was 19. Mm-hmm. Um, I never had the chance to go to film school. So that book quickly became my Bible. Um, and I just always had an idea. This would translate really well as, as a film. Just pocketed the idea for a number of years and then finally got enough courage to actually a- ask him to, uh, to make it come true. And that's how it started. Then when the film was happening, it turned over a new leaf. And it, it kind of went from the idea of like having this film fan celebration about movies mm-hmm. into a, a man's life and to really understand how... Um, beyond uh, what Roger has contributed uh, to the film world. I think that by the end of the movie, and definitely by the, my, by the end of me working on the film, or mm-hmm. editing the film, I got to a place where I really understood that the most valuable thing that he's given is like these lessons of confidence, um, this great kind of like fatherly role that he's, he's kind of had with, with me and with all of the people in this film of just really believing in you and just being like a really solid, cool, awesome person. <laughs> and then you just want to, you know, there's something about that that just makes you want to work really hard and made me, and the, the whole crew that was working on this film really motivated to tell the best story that we possibly could. So one last question, just for each of you, if you can take a shot at it, is uh, what 
um, what do you hope, who do you hope the audience will be for this film, and what do you hope they'll take away from it? So I guess we'll go down the line. You, you're up this time. <laughs> well, I would hope that the audience would be the broadest possible. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the film is extremely well made. I think it will do well and see, be seen by a lot of people in the United States. And from what I understand, the foreign sales have been very good, so I would hope that it would be seen by a lot of people overseas. Uh, what I would hope that they would take away with them is some understanding of my work, but also some understanding of the independent film movement as well. Absolutely. Um, Mrs. Corman? I think, uh, I think the real strength of what Alex did is in the personal revelation. Uh, that she was able to get people to get off their guard so that you understood their connection to uh, independent filmmaking and to Roger as kind of the godfather of independent filmmaking and that that, that is a kind of through line um, that should appeal and be interesting to anyone interested in independent filmmaking but beyond that to anyone interested in this kind of a life which gave further life to so many people. Absolutely. And Alex? I think I'm just going to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all very much, and congratulations. Appreciate it.